history of my Cappuccino Web Application Framework tutorial series. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to be diving a little bit more into the Objective J language and syntax um, and do something a little bit more interesting with uh, this button action. So, all, we, all we're going to be doing is just building on top of what we did in the last tutorial. And all we did is create an action that's called when this button is clicked. Um, so, to start off, go ahead and just delete whatever code within your button clicked action in here in our app controller. Um, and then we're going to do something a little bit more interesting. If you go into the Cappuccino API documentation and extend the class list, um, you'll see all these different classes that we could work with, but in this tutorial, it's not really enough time to do anything too uh, complicated um, or advanced, so we're going to take it slow here. I'm going to show you the CP alert class. If you select that within the class list, you'll have you'll see a whole bunch of uh, functions we can use. And essentially, a CP alert is is um, an alert box that has custom CSS and everything. So it looks really nice. It looks like it's native cappuccino. And it has um, a few different options you can s set through the Objective J language rather than using the default um, JavaScript alert function. So, um, Let's go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, if you go back into Atlas, we're going to create, in this action, we're going to create a new CP alert variable and call this um, alert. And then we do the um, CP alert alloc in it. So if you're familiar with Objective C, um, this will look pretty straightforward to you. Uh, if you're not familiar with Objective C, um, basically we're just initializing a variable alert of type CP alert. And actually, since this isn't an IVAR in Cappuccino, we just say VAR alert. So uh, we're initializing a, a variable alert, which is of type CP alert. And we basically, we allocate it, and then we initialize it. So allocate actually, um, creates like sets aside a certain amount of space or of memory space for this variable and then this init actually creates the variable itself so from here we can actually work with the alert variable and uh, uh, don't feel um, you know objective C or objective objective J looks pretty weird when you first get into it, but it, it'll make sense later on. Um, basically, any object, actual Objective J um, code goes within these these square brackets, and um, so essentially, in it is like a method. That's the equivalent of saying like, uh, let's let's pretend that alert was a, a standard JavaScript variable. You'd say alert dot in it. That's like kind of the the equivalent there. It's just in Objective J, we use these square brackets, and there's no parentheses um, indicating like parameters for the function, if that makes sense. But you'll see as we go on how how this works. Um, so what I, we want to do is actually uh, we want to set a title, and then we also want to set message text, and then we'd also like to in the end we'd actually like to open this alert box. Um, so to do that, we call the run model method, which does not take any parameters. So let's try this. Um, so first, we want to do set title, and that's going to take in a CP string. So let's just go ahead and select or uh, click on that set title link, and you'll see more details um, right here. So it's, uh, it does not return anything, um, and then it takes in a CP string which is basically the same thing as a standard JavaScript string. So uh, we call that method on alert by saying within these brackets we do alert um, set title and then in Cappuccino you can easily e either use the um, string the 
the Objective C inspired string literal um, with the at sign in front, or you can just use a standard string. But just for um, keeping the Objective J vibe going, we just uh, I'm gonna put that uh, at sign there, and all that says is that this is a string literal. Um, so set title. Let's say my title. And then we close the brackets and a semicolon at the end. And then, of course, we're going to call another method, which is set message text. Right. So if we go back into the Cappuccino API, um, we have set message text, and it takes in a CP string once again. And then we're going to say this is some message text in a CP alert. Okay, and then the last thing we do with this alert thing to actually make this visible is say alert run model. Okay, and um, for those people that are used to Coco and Objective C in Cappuccino, there's no need to call any kind of re release method on an object at the very end. Um, uh, since this is all JavaScript, it's not really, it's not, I would say that it's not real memory management in that um, Cappuccino's not really allocating anything that low level here. It's just, you know, to keep the standardized Coco um, ways of doing things. Um, so yeah, there's no need to call release on any objects. So that's really that really only applies to people that are used to Coco. If you're if you've never done any Coco or Objective C programming, then you don't have to worry about what I just said about releasing variables. Um, so if we go ahead and save that uh, and build it, or you can do build and run if you, if you um, if you want. But for me, I just want to build, and I can actually refresh the page within my Safari browser. So we have our button once again. Nothing's changed here. But when we click this, notice how we have this really, really nice-looking cappuccino um, alert box. Um, it has the title that we sent in, my title. And then it has some text. This is some message text and a CP alert, which is what we did. And you can see that cappuccino takes care of a lot of nice styling options for this. You can see that there's a nice like shadow in the background, and they have this little like like alert icon next to everything. It's really quite nice. So let's actually um, add a button to this alert box because I mean we can't close it or anything here. It's just it's just there. So I want to add like some kind of OK button. So what we can do if we go back into the API documentation, um, we will find uh, a method add button with title and we don't uh, and once again it takes in a CP string parameter and it's the title of the button which is the text that you see within the button so let's call that add button with title method on our alert box so we just go back into our app controller.j we say alert add button with title and then string literal once again and then say let's just say okay so that's our button title and that's what that's the text we'll see on the button so I click build it takes a little while sometimes oh, I guess I didn't actually click it there anyway builds we just close that okay so go back into Safari and I'm gonna refresh the page again So let's try opening up the alert box again. Click me, and this time you can see we have a button that says OK. And it's the same text, same title. We press OK, it closes it. So um, it's not really any kind of application you throw up for somebody to use, but it really does look nice. Um, and at this point, you uh, should kind of understand um, the basic syntax of Objective-J and um, the basic workflow of Atlas. So at this point you're ready to move on to actually start creating 
um, useful applications in Cappuccino. And uh, Cappuccino really makes it so that these web applications um, feel like desktop applications. So you're almost the the possibilities are almost limitless. Um, so anyway, uh, that's the that's all I have to say for this tutorial. Um, if you haven't already, go to my blog connordemon.wordpress.com. I post um, content that uh, I don't always have in video form. So uh, and then also I write extra information about video tutorial to have up here on YouTube. So yeah, go ahead and check that out. And if you like my videos, go ahead and subscribe, like this video, comment, whatever. If you have questions, you can post it on my blog as a comment. Um, or you can uh, question on the below this video in the comments. Um, so thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.